Hi, I'm Marcus Lapp with the Indie Music Lab. Have you ever been producing a song and it starts to sound like this? Well, guess what? I've got good news for you. There is a way to fix this and it's much easier than you might think. So let's dive into the three ways to save CPU in Studio One. Okay, tip number one to save CPU in Studio One is transform your virtual instruments to rendered audio. This is gonna do most of the heavy lifting in most projects with maxed out CPU. So if you start producing a track and you add you know, addictive drums and five instances of Omnisphere and a piano, and then all the plugins that go on those, you're left with a hot glitchy mess because you're overworking your computer and you've got a real problem on your hands that sounds like this. So how do we fix that? Well, first off, and this is probably not going to feel right at first, but you got to transform your MIDI instrument tracks to audio. I know, I know, I know. That's a tough thing to do, but let me tell you, if you get into the habit of doing this, forget CPU for a second. This will just make you a better producer because your ear will be more in tune and alert for distracting mistakes because you know that you're bouncing it to audio. So it'll keep you in check and you'll make better decisions because you know that you're making final decisions on these tracks. Now, how do you do this? Well, it's really easy. Just go to your instrument, right click and select transform to audio track. Now, before I hit this, what I always do is I'll select all the events that are in here and I'll right click and select merge events or just hit G on my keyboard. And that merges all of those chopped up sections. Like if you duplicated a loop, it'll merge all of it into one track. That way, when you bounce it to audio, it doesn't have all those cuts in it. And then once I have that done, then I just right click, transform to audio track, and boom. Now what's really cool about this is it's not as much of a risk as you think, because check this out. Let's say there's something distracting that you really need to fix with this track. Well, guess what? You can transform it right back to the instrument, original instrument MIDI track and make the necessary adjustments. And by doing that, all you, all you need to do is hit right click again and hit transform to instrument track and it goes right back to its original state. Like so. So I think it's a good compromise. It's not a total commitment because you have the option of transforming it back to its original MIDI instrument state, but psychologically it still feels like you've committed the track to audio and that's really healthy for you and your growth as a producer and it will make a massive difference with your CPU usage. And uh, like if I bounce all of these to audio, notice, notice where the CPU is now. And if I bounce all of these to audio, notice what happens. And here it is with all these instruments bounced down to audio. Look at that. Okay, tip number two is transform audio and MIDI tracks that have multiple plugins. So this is the exact same idea as tip number one, except now we're talking about plugins that eat up your CPU. So let's say I've, I've got a vocal and I just pulled in a vocal from my library, just a little vocal sample. And uh, now I'm just gonna throw a bunch of plugins on here and then I'll show you my process and the way I go about then bouncing those effects down to a rendered audio file. Okay, so I threw a bunch of plugins on here. I've got an EQ, compressor, reverb, delay, saturation, and an automated sidechain. And then that sounds like this. So if you're producing this and you're like, man, that's perfect. That's exactly what I was looking for. I love that, now I'm gonna move on. Like, no, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. If it's exactly what you want, then bounce the freaking thing to audio. Render those effects, print it to an, an audio track. Again, it's the exact same idea, transform to rendered audio. Again, you can choose to just leave this option on there to preserve the real-time state if, you know, because there's always a chance that you maybe do wanna go back and correct it, but if you wanna, really live life on the edge a little, maybe even uncheck that. That way you have to stick to it. That way everything else that you do uh, comes into alignment with what you already have. And so, but you do have the option where if, if you do wanna fix something, you can then transform it back. So I'm gonna go ahead and transform this to a rendered audio. And then when I click here, the plugins aren't listed here anymore because they're the, it's printed into the track now.
again, if you want to um, fix anything or change anything, you can just transform it back to real time audio. And boom, we are right back to where we started. All right, and before we get to tip number three, if you found this video helpful and you wanna know more about what makes a great sounding production, I've got a gift for you in the description below. It's called a five step guide for producing wow factor indie music. In this guide, I go through the five steps, the five phases that a standard production of mine will go through and I have it all mapped out in there. So feel free to check that out. I think it'll be really helpful for you. All right, step number three, let's go. Okay, and finally, tip number three is use effects channels on multiple use plugins. Now, FX channels, as they're called in Studio One, they're also known as sends, return tracks, and aux tracks, depending on what DAW you use, but they all mean the same thing. So to do this, you have to set up an independent track by going to, uh, to your mix window here and right-clicking and add an FX channel. And now you can add anything you want here. So let's add a reverb. Let's just add a little plate right here. So we add a reverb and I'll label this plate reverb. Now this track has nothing but plugins on it. This does not have audio on it. All it is is a standalone return track that will allow you to send as many sounds through this reverb as you want to. And this is especially useful and will save you a ton of CPU um, because let's say you wanted to use a similar reverb or even the same reverb for multiple sounds that you have, instead of adding little plate to like Instead of adding that to three different ones, right? Instead of adding the same reverb to three different tracks, it's like, why not just have one reverb and then and instead select sends and send it to this plate reverb. So now these three sounds right here are all being sent to this reverb right here. If we turn all them off, And obviously you can adjust it however you want. You can even adjust the panning right and left. And yeah, you can just adjust it to taste. Uh, you can automate the amount as well so that uh, let's say certain sections of your song, you want less reverb, you want it to be more dry. And then in a bigger section of the song, maybe you wanna send more of the track to the reverb so you get more of a reverb, of a reverb sound. And so in order to do that, all you would need to do is right click, add an automation send level, and then you can come in here and uh, let's say we just don't want much reverb here. So we'll start off just like that. And then maybe here we're just gonna blast it. Right? So, and then you can bring that back down. You can automate it. So yeah, and notice again, I'm using one reverb for all of this. So these three tracks are all being sent to the exact same reverb instead of using three reverbs and that using up all that CPU, I've got one reverb doing, doing all the work for all three of these tracks. Now the main two effects that I recommend using FX channels for are reverbs and delays. Those are the main ones. Um, another one that I do use often is a doubler where I'll set up an FX channel with a doubler on it that I'll maybe send my lead vocal to. Um, just to get a little bit of a wider sound, I might automate that to just coming during the chorus or something. But usually for me, it's reverbs and delays for sure. And then it is doubler as well for me. So if you're using the same plugin for multiple things, set up an effects channel return track, and that will make a gigantic difference with your CPU usage, especially because reverbs and delays in particular eat up CPUs like freaking hyenas. It's insane. All right, and as a quick recap, the three ways to save CPU in Studio One is, number one, transform your virtual instruments to rendered audio. Number two, transform audio and MIDI tracks that have multiple CPU heavy plugins. And number three, use effects channels on reverbs and delays. All right, that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If this was helpful, do me a favor and leave me a comment and let me know which one of these three things are you currently not practicing. And I would love to hear what your results are when you try one or all three of these tips. All right, I'm out. Until next time, see ya.